Hey guys, Ivan here, and this video we're gonna start with Nick Walker. As you guys already probably know, Nick Walker is back with Matt Jansen. I made a video about this at first, I wasn't so sure if this was official, but now we know, it's official, they both confirmed it, Nick Walker is back with Matt Jansen, and I'm sure you guys saw this photo where Nick Walker posted him posing in Matt Jansen's gym, uh, he wrote a caption saying home, and Matt Jansen commented there is work to be done. And so today Nick Walker did a little Q&A and he commented on this situation. So he started his Q&A but he stopped answering because I'm sure all of the questions were about this and he didn't want to talk about that too much but he gave us some information and also in this video we're going to talk about why Nick Walker got back with his old coach Matt Jansen and why he stopped working with Dom Super Sliced. First let's check out what Nick had to say about this. Um, yes, we are back to working together. Um, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> Feels like home. I mean, I kind of made a post. Yeah. And this is the only post that he made. I know, guys, Nick was very vague in his answers here. Obviously, he doesn't want to talk too much about it because he knows everybody is waiting for his actual comment. And I'm sure it will happen first on Fuad Abiyad's podcast. As soon as it happens, if he says something interesting, I'm going to comment on it as well here. Dom Super Sliced didn't really make any comment about this. It looks like he is kind of upset, and he should be. Nick Walker is definitely his highest profile client. And I am sure that there was a lot of pressure on him because he was trying to prepare somebody who is who is potentially going to win the Mr. Olympia. And considering that he never really had any top, top level pros, it was definitely a risky business. And I'm sure Nick Walker didn't really feel super confident about it. He probably didn't know what was going to happen, which is totally understandable. This is one of the photos that Nick posted while he was working with Dom Super Sliced. So basically what you can see in all of his progress photos, it looks like he definitely gained a lot of muscle in this past offseason. You're gonna see comparison from last year's offseason to this one, so he definitely gained a lot of muscle. So props to uh, Dom for that. But as far as conditioning, the way this prep was going, I made videos about this. I said in my videos, Nick Walker looks soft. I said it multiple times. I know a lot of people didn't agree with me, they were saying that he actually looks good for like 16-15 weeks out, but I don't know about that, I don't think he looked that impressive, I think he looked way more impressive when he was working with Matt Jensen, I'm gonna show you some photos of his older prep, you're gonna see what he looked like back with Matt. And I mean, you can kind of see it in his face, too, that he didn't really look super happy, super confident with the way he looked at this point. And he actually never even shared a lot of these photos. These photos were taken with a high-quality camera. He was definitely pumped up. They chose a good lighting. These photos were supposed to be, like, really good photos. When he was taking high-quality photos when he was working with Matt, those photos were something. However, these, he didn't even share all of them. You can see all of them on a photographer's profile, but Nick maybe chose one or two, and in both of those that he posted, he didn't look that great. Here, for example, he was working with Matt Jensen, and he was 17 weeks out. As you can see, his conditioning, his hardness was far better than it was in those photos. It was far better. And I'm sure he knew that very well. He went back, he took a look at his photos, and he realized he is not looking very good at this point. And here he looked amazing. He looked hard, really, really hard at 17 freaking weeks out. But did he grow in the offseason? Hell yeah, hell yeah, he grew, he grew a lot, he is way bigger than he was right here, but again guys, Nick Walker is a freaking mutant, he is a freak of nature, and when he wants to grow, he grows, he would have grown if he was working alone, if he was working with Matt, I don't think Dom really had too much to do with that, but Nick was coached by him, so props for that, for sure. And now, as the show is getting closer, as far as landing this freaking enormous plane, you know, Nick was definitely not confident working with somebody who doesn't have a lot of experience, and Matt Jensen basically picked Nick Walker every single time he was competing, not just him. 
Matt Jensen picks everybody perfectly, basically. So, as a fan of Nick Walker, I'm really happy that this went down. Now I'm more confident that Nick is actually going to bring something crazy to the Mr. Olympia. And right now, I kind of have to say I have him potentially in my top 3 at a Mr. Olympia this year. For sure, he is enormous. You guys know that Ian Valier is arguably one of the biggest bodybuilders on that Mr. Olympia stage. And side chest is one of his best poses. And Nick Walker is basically known for having weaker chest. His chest is like his weakest point. But here, standing next to Ian on the Mr. Olympia stage, you can see how much better Nick Walker actually is. Like he has more fullness in chest, he has bigger shoulders, bigger arms, legs are looking better. And this was a year ago when Nick Walker was way smaller than he is right now. Right now, the way he looks right now... Whew, how much muscle he actually added, and now that he has Matt Jansen in his corner, this is going to be something ridiculous. What do you guys think? Where Nick Walker is going to place at the Mr. Olympia? And do you agree with me when I said that he didn't really feel confident, that he didn't really look that good during his prep with his new coach, with his actually former coach now, Dom Super Sliced? Whatever you guys think, please let me know down below in the comment section. Guys, if you're looking for a high quality protein powder, I will suggest to you Vintage Brawn. It's actually egg white protein, beef isolate protein, and also whey isolate protein. So it's a complete source of amino acids. There are so many great flavors. You can choose your own. The link is down below. And if you use the code EVAN, you get a 15% discount. Since we are talking about Mr. Olympia and potential placements, where do I have Samson Dauda? As you can see right here, right now, his conditioning is improving and he looks absolutely monstrous. His conditioning, to me, seems better than that of Nick. He looks harder and leaner. His legs are definitely far better. They have the aesthetics and they have bigger sweep. They just look insane. They look impressive. Chest, also much, much fuller. Arms, let's say Nick has bigger arms, but you would never say that Samson doesn't have huge arms. Like, he's, he's right there. And as far as shoulders, I think Samson's got him. Now, as far as chest, look at this chest. Like, Samson is known for having huge, huge chest, and that is a flaw of Nick Walker. What is going to be Samson's downfall? It has always been his rear side, not just the back itself, but the conditioning of the glutes and hamstrings. However, his back is definitely way better. It still is a weak point, but look at it. Like, it's not that weak. And I think it's a, it's a posing issue. Look, if he opened up a little bit more, this would not even look like a weak back. Here, it looks so much better than last year, and it's not really that much of a weak point. So, I know Samson never really proved himself to that level, but based on what I'm seeing, I just cannot say that I don't see this guy being in top 6 in the Mr. Olympia at the very least. At least. You guys know how heavy he is. Like, he's a big freaking dude. I think he was like 336 at one point in prep. And now, I don't know what his weight is right now, but he's probably not below 300. So he's going to be really huge on the stage. And he doesn't have many flaws. Look at the stomach. Look at the waistline. Look at those crazy, crazy legs. Chest, arms, shoulders. Everything from the front and from the sides looks ridiculous. Looks insane. He really doesn't have a lot of flaws. The only flaw could be back, but it is much, much improved, and it's not that weak, it's not that bad, he is really, really good right now. So, again, I know it's really hard to predict where this guy is going to place, because we first have to see him compared to the other guys, but if I was a batting man, and from what I'm seeing right here, I have him not worse than top 6. The only reason I'm not saying he's going to win the Mr. Olympia is because of those lats. It's hurting him in the back poses and in some of the front poses like this one, front lat spread. So that is a flaw. It's one flaw, everybody has flaws, but this is kind of a big one. So it's definitely going to hurt him. And if he didn't have this flaw, if he had an amazing back, I would say he's going to be the Mr. Olympia winner. Like this, I have him not worse than top 6 potentially top three. That's what I'm seeing here. That's what I believe. If you guys think I'm exaggerating or something else, tell me down below in the comment section. As you can see, his glutes are coming in, basically. Like, he never really had shredded glutes, and I don't really expect him to have them totally peeled, like Nick Walker's, for example, because he just doesn't have the genetics to get those glutes super peeled. Similar situation with Andrew Jack. I mean, we'll see. Maybe Andrew Jack is going to get them peeled for the Mr. Olympia. Maybe he was saving his conditioning for that show. But as far as Samson, 
Now he's working with Milos Archer. Milos knows all kinds of freaking secrets. And if there is a way to spot remove fat, aside from liposuction, of course, uh, Milos knows that secret. Milos knows how to do that. So I'm really expecting Samson to bring great conditioning, great looking glutes. As you can see, even at this point, his glutes are not that bad. Like maybe he won't have uh, crazy cuts, crazy details and lines, but he will be in condition. And as you can see, his back is much better. Uh, there are flaws. His lads definitely should come up, but everything else looks super, super impressive. Overall, he looks very compact. Again, top 6, potentially top 3. If he had better lads, Mr. Olympia winner. That's my opinion. Whatever you guys think, tell me down below. Alright, next, let's talk about James Hollingshead. So you guys saw him at the Arnold Classic UK where he looked tremendous. He looked amazing. That was definitely his best edition ever. And now, after that show, he's not quite certain what he's going to do. Before that show, in all of his YouTube videos and podcast of Fuad Abiyad, he was talking about his approach, his cheat meals, uh, him prepping alone, having just somebody looking at him from time to time, and we were all very, very doubtful. We weren't sure what's gonna happen. However, he proved to us that he knows what he's doing. And now, at this point, he, he signed up actually for France, but he didn't show up. Why? I'm gonna show you in a second. But before I play that video, I gotta say, he still seems kind of unsure and he has some weird opinions. So I feel like the way I felt before the Arnold Classic UK, I'm still doubtful. When I listen to him, I'm like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. That's the impression that I get. But he proved to me at the Arnold Classic UK that he actually knows exactly what he's doing. He knows his body. He has been doing bodybuilding for a long time. And obviously, he's a smart guy. He makes good decisions. So now I have full trust in him, in his process and in his future. So basically what he's going to do, let me show you what he says, what he's going to do next. I've just had a very good showing and I'm very happy. Listen, I, I think that's the best look I've ever had. The last thing I want to do is step back up there any worse than I've just presented. I want to give you guys better. I've signed up for the front show, but I, I'm, I'm not going to lie. And I'll be honest with you. I don't know what I'm doing yet because my heart and my body, it very much knows that in between shows, I need a little bit of reset time because it, I can't just immediately switch back on. I could, but I don't think it's beneficial if, if that makes sense. What I learned this year is, you know, the volumes of food that I have to eat in order to stay a certain amount of musculature and protect the physique that I have. That tells me that off the back of a show, if I go straight back to like that low food and trying to burn fat and get leaner, then I could be at risk of undoing some of the work that I've done. So I will do another show, 100%. Listen, I'm not not doing another show. Uh, it's just now working out what time frames I need to be able to get myself energized again and then come back down improve a touch because the only thing i really can do from here is be a bit sharper well i gotta say it makes sense what james said here so he wants to improve his conditioning he doesn't think one week is enough and if he lowers the food in that one week he's afraid that he's going to lose some muscle and he doesn't want to do that he wants to be huge like he was right here only sharper so i trust him i have confidence in james i'm sure he's going to do exactly what he said and he's going to win whichever show he decides to do there aren't that many pro shows left and james said he he wants to do another show, he wants to qualify for the Mr. Olympia, so next weekend we have two shows, one is Legion Sports Fest in Reno, and the other one is Tsunami Pro in Italy, and I think that show in Italy is sponsored by Yamamoto, and Yamamoto is from Italy, as you guys know, and James is sponsored by Yamamoto Nutrition, he was supposed to do France, Yamamoto France Pro, that's the name of the show, it's Yamamoto's show, however, he didn't do it, and from what I heard, Yamamoto people are upset, very much upset that James didn't show up, so he has another opportunity to do this show in Italy, and that's most likely what's he going to do. So we are most likely gonna see James Hollingshead compete this weekend in that Italy Pro and he's going to win it. I know Jamie Johal is gonna do Legion Sports and I don't know about Mark Hector but he's going to do probably one of those two shows, most likely Legion, but if James shows up in Italy and Mark does too, James is winning that. I'm confident about that. Whatever you guys think though, tell me down below in the comment section, like this video if you enjoyed it and for more bodybuilding videos like this, subscribe to my channel guys. Thank you so much for watching, all the best and bye bye.